Yummy, 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 I got food tummy. It's a Tupper world. Hello, everybody, how are you? My name is Tupperware Pete. Oh my goodness, there is a little bit of weird stuff happening right here with my other device. Just let me, I can't believe I've done this. <gasps> now we're back in action. Yes, we are. I'm going to be cooking tonight mushroom risotto. Sorry about that false start. I'm going to cook a mushroom risotto in the Tupperware micro pressure cooker. This is the pressure cooker that goes into the microwave. So it acts as a... We're having a very interesting time here. Let's just... There we go. <laughs> Should always switch the phone onto silent before you go live. I tell you what, it's been one of those days and stick around. It's going to be one of those nights, all right? I'm going to cook a mushroom risotto. I've got something cooking in there and I'll show you that in a moment. But first, before we do, <laughs> even my blower's not working properly. Happy birthday, Tupperware. Happy birthday, Tupperware. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tupperware, indeed. I'm going to, and that's a wrap, I'm going to be slicing up my mushrooms in the super dicer. This is the Tupperware super dicer. You can use little dicers, you can use big dicers, or you can use juliennes in there, all right? So we've got our julienne in there. I've just got my mushrooms, and I'll show you. This is so easy. I've got my mushrooms in a VetSmart container, and all you have to do is slice them up, baby. Oh, we're gonna, there we go, that's it. Like, how easy is that? Can you see that? It is the easiest device in the world. I like, I haven't had mushrooms in ages. These have been in my Ventsmart container for about two weeks. It's time to eat them. Truth be told, I forgot about them at the back of the fridge and then just went, oh my goodness, I've got so many mushrooms. What are we gonna make? Mushroom risotto is what we're going to do. All right, so they're probably a bit um, soft for this machine. However, who's going to be slicing up mushrooms for your risotto when you can just pop them through here? There is our sliced mushrooms. How awesome is that? Perfectly sliced, uniform slice, measured with accuracy. We're gonna pop them straight into ooh, the Tupperware pressure cooker. Okay, now, how amazing is that? <laughs> we'll pop that, that goes into the dishwasher or a gentle hand washer is probably what is recommended the best, all right? We have got these, I made my homemade stock in another Tupperware pressure cooker. I do have a few of them kicking around the kitchen. So once you finish with the barbecue chicken, just throw the carcass into your pressure cooker with whatever bay leaves, um, peppercorns, whatever herbs and spices that you want. Pop it on for 25, 30 minutes, right? 30 minutes is the maximum. And there's your homemade stock. I've got this in my freezer and I've dialed up the date that I put it in the freezer so I know when I've put it in the freezer. All I'm going to do now is just pour that straight into there, right? Now, it is, it's got a little bit of congealed on there, but, you know, everybody eats be beef bone broth, except for, you know, Tiffany, but that's okay. And we're going to pop that into there. On the bottom, it tells us, <laughs> it tells us how, what are the millage is on the bottom so that you can measure up um, to your heart's content in there, all right? So, we'll just pop them down there. Oh, no, mushrooms on the ground. That's okay. Tupperware down, Tupperware down. There's our little supersonic chopper. No need to ask, it's a supersonic chopper. We have got some onion. We are just going to jam pack that through. It's a quick, you know, when you don't be, you couldn't be bothered cooking, but you still want to eat something healthy and you don't want to pay for takeaway. This is a really good recipe. That's just your brown onion, quickly diced. Throw that straight into there. We'll grab this. We'll grab the other. We'll throw in some cloves of garlic. Let's pop that into there. No messing about. We're just going to chop that up. We'll pull that. See? Look how easy that is. Garlic, onion, just pop that straight into there, and then you're done. Now what we're going to do is, oh, there's a little bit that made it onto the bench. We will grab a one cup measure. Grab the tab, grab the tab, peel the seal. There's your modular mates. Uh, Boreo rice. We've got one label on one side, one label on the other side. So I can pop this into the pan free whenever, however I like. And there's always going to be a label facing the outside. I'm going to measure up with love and accuracy. <laughs> 
and hopefully it'll stay in the pressure cooker. There's one cup of Arborio rice. Excuse me, that's the black water coming up to say hello. And how awesome is that? That's it, baby. Let's just give it a... Where are my glasses? <laughs> I think that's it. Hang on a minute. Before we, before we pop it in, let's just make sure that we're going to stir this around. I'm just going to make sure that I've got the quantities, you know, roughly correct. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. One cup of rice, and it's about, on the bottom here, how much stock did I do? I think I did about 500 mils. Yeah, so it's 650 to the fill line, so that's about... Two cups of liquid to one cup of Arborio rice. You can use white wine if you like. I never have white wine in the in the house, so I never bother. I've just got homemade chicken stock. That's from the lemon chicken that I, the lemon barbecue chicken that I cooked. This is it here. Can you see that there? That's what it looks like uncooked. All you have to do is line up the arrows, slide that around, and instead of standing on the stovetop stirring your risotto or popping it in your slow cooker for four to six to eight hours. This thing's gonna do it, a mushroom risotto, 14, 15 minutes, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this straight out. We're gonna pop that straight in there. We are going to pop it in for, oh, let's pop it in for 14 minutes. While that's happening, let me show you this. I've gotta grab mine. <laughs> Luckily Tupperware do, did you know Tupperware do eco cloths? They're like, they're designed, they're, they're recycled microfiber and it's designed to be chemical free cleaning. So whether you're using them in your bathroom, in your uh, laundry, in your kitchen, they've got dishwashing cloths, they've got scrubbing, mob, mop scrubbers, they've got chamois, they've got dust towels, they've got all purpose cloths, glass cleaners, window cleaners, mirror cleaners, um, eyeglass cleaners, cleaners for your phone and for your computer screens. They've got a lot there. Most people don't realize that Tupperware do eco cloths, all right? And most people don't realize that they do this thing, which is like a barbecue that goes into the microwave. This is my red onion, balsamic vinegar, and Brussels sprouts that I popped. Oh, that I popped. Speaking of popped, <laughs> I popped. That. I couldn't have timed that better even if I wanted to. That goes into the microwave. Yes, it's made out of stainless steel. Yes, it will brown a T-bone steak in nine minutes. And yes, it will do my Brussels sprouts and red onion in nine minutes with balsamic vinegar and a little bit of olive oil. Now, it is... Don't they look delicious? We're going to pop that straight there. And because it's made out of metal, we don't have to eat it immediately. That's going to stay hot until our risotto is clean, all right? Now, if we wanted to, we've got a mushroom risotto. We've got our Brussels sprouts with red onion in our Micro Pro grill. Let's pretend we wanted to make a beautiful homemade, I don't know, chicken, camembert and cashew sausage. Does Tupperware have a product for that? Yes, they do. It's called the Tupperware, I don't know what it's called actually, it's called the Fusion Master, right? So this is amazing. There's all these little bits to it. I just want to show you. Let's pretend, no, I'm not going to make sausages. I'm going to pretend I'm going to make sausages, all right? I just want to take this apart and I want to show you. Oh, this is, this is like your little ninja star, right? That just slides straight in. This is the top piece in here. That little ninja star just slides straight into the top here, all right? Then we've got, there's this little blade in here. So if you want a small mince, you can do that. In the top of this, you've got another one which does your large mince, all right? So how cool is that? So what we're going to do is we are going to put our small mince straight into there. Can you see the top? You've got that little knot, that little notch in there. You just pop that straight into there. There we go. We are going to slide that on here, right? Once that slide onto here, you just turn this around to the lock position. That locks it into place so you can't move it off the bench top, all right? So we're just going to slide that into here. We've got... You don't have to use the sausage attachment, but you can if you want to. So let's pretend. And you can get sausage casings from the butcher, whether you uh, get ones that are made from animals or whether you get synthetic ones, you can get them from the butcher. Um, and you just screw that on. This here will tells you, turn it that way to lock, turn it that way to unlock. And we will pop that, which way? That way. So we're gonna turn it this way to lock in, right? Now, and then all you have to do is, this here tells you you turn it that way to turn your handle and you just turn your handle. Now, if this wasn't locked into place, 
that's not <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna go all the way around. But because I can lock that into place now, how easy is that? I've done fish burgers in here before. I've done I've done homemade sausages. I've put chickpeas and kidney beans and lentils through here and minced them up before. You can just pop your sausage on the top there, and then out will pop your sausages. Or you can remove that and then just turn that into mince. Um, whatever you're not using the sausage. Um, dis the sausage dispenser, you just pop that into here for Ron. Later on. <laughs> all right, so let's pretend we could do sausages with that, all right? Now, we're not going to do that though tonight. So, or you know what we might want to do? Me, we might want to grab our other. Where did my other? I'm going to show you how I'm going to make. I'm going to do some more stock because I don't have any stock in my. I've used the last of it. So, you know how your meat marinator. <laughs> We've got our meat marinated. Palm of the hand in the middle, lift up on the side and you lift that up. I've got my chicken that I did the other night, last week, I think. This has been in the fridge. I'm down to the to the bare bones of it all. Um, and I did lemon, rosemary and the chicken with 150 mils of water, a little bit of um, sweet paprika. I popped that into my pressure cooker and I popped that in for the full 30 minutes and I've been nibbling on that chicken all week long. Now it's time to turn it into stock. We are all we're going to do is put that straight into there. Let's grab our spatula, lemon, rosemary, the whole lot. We're just going to pop that straight into here. I'm not going to throw this away. I'm going to turn this into stock and I'm going to freeze it into little batches, all right? So that that way I don't have to you know, I don't have to eat preservatives or sodium or anything from my stock and I know exactly what's going in it, all right? So what we're going to do is we will grab our, we've got some bay leaves, we've got some mustard seeds and we've got some sweet paprika. They shout it out, it's all, yeah! Paprika, 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 yeah, yeah! All right, paprika. Let's put some paprika into there. Let's grab a few bay leaves and we will... Just throw in a handful of bay leaves. Great for digestion, your bay leaves. I've got some mustard seeds. Stand back. I have a mustard seed and I'm ready to use it. All right. We'll throw in some mustard seeds into there. And on top of the fridge, I'm hoping I've got black peppercorns. Yes, we do. Black peppercorns. All right. So we've got some black peppercorns. Remember, a label on one side, a label on the other side. Then it doesn't matter which way you pop it in the pantry. You've always got a label facing the outside. I've just got some... I'm going to do a handful of black pepper peppercorns straight into there. Now all I'm going to do is grab my Tupperware measuring cups. 150 mils is all you need, but I'm going to do a litre. I mean a litre. I'm going to do a cup. So I'm just going to pour that straight into there. And that's it. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to make stock. <laughs> I'm a little bit under the weather. Have you noticed? All right. I'm not. I'm going to make stock, which means I'm going to do... A whole lot. I'm going to do about a litre and a half. Or I'm going to fill it, actually. Let's just fill this up with the... Talk amongst yourselves for this bit. I forgot to prep this bit. Just talk amongst yourselves. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. That's the Tupperware Muzak. All right. I've got... There we go. And we're just going to get a little bit more... There's a land that I've heard of once or twice in a lullaby Somewhere over the rainbow Alright, with the pressure cooker <laughs> There is a maximum line Please respect the maximum line Where is it? <laughs> I can't even see it now There is a maximum line which is I just happen to know it's just below that little crevice There we go Pop that into there. These are the water bottles that go into the freezer, by the way. They're brilliant, all right? Then what we're going to do is, we're going to pop this on, give that a spin, lock that into place. Now, instead of our, our stock simmering on the stove top for three hours, two hours, four hours, or instead of the slow cooker being on for four, six, eight hours, this will do it in 20 to 30 minutes. Whether you're doing pulled pork, silver side, a roast chook, um... Um, 
what, whether you're doing a chili con carne or um, mashed potatoes or any of your veggies. I do plum jam in here. I've done macaroni cheese, every risotto, seafood risotto is delicious in here. You can do an eight minute chocolate Tim Tam cake in here. I've got a few of them. Um, and because there's no little silver knob that you pop on the stove top, it's not gonna pop off halfway through the cooking process and go straight through your roof. It works on the health benefits of pressure cooking your food. And it has the results of a slow cooker. It's it's slow cooking fast. It's a one pot wonder. It's absolutely divine, right? Delicious, all right? So we've got those. I'm gonna put my onion and my onion keeper and my garlic keeper. I'm gonna pop these away now. Remember, garlic up the top, onions down in here, and then there's another one for your potatoes as well. And with the um, garlic, let me just show you. I keep my garlic press in with the garlic keeper, and but I'm going to leave it out because I'm going to show you how to de-leaf your thyme. I'm going to pop that into there. So let me just move this out of the way. Pop this straight out of the way. And then for dessert, you know what we're going to do for dessert? I don't know yet, but we can do anything we want because we've got the Tupperware silicon cookware, right? So I've got them in here. So we could do, oh, I don't know, have a look. We could make little individual cheesecakes or we could do some savory muffins or we could do some sweet muffins in here or we could do some rocky road or we could do some chocolate baskets have you seen that video i don't recommend it unless you know exactly what you're doing right or we could do little round ones they fit in the micro pro grill you could do a nice little cake in the oven or the microwave in there we might want to make our own homemade donuts yum yum how delicious would that be and if we're not making homemade donuts we can make a homemade bagel. How awesome would that be? Or at Easter time, or any time really, we could make little chocolate eggs or marshmallow eggs. We could do that for dessert. Now with the Tupperware silicon, you really need to wash it with hot soapy water before each use and after as well, right? Never spray this with anything. Don't spray it and it will last forever, right? So that's your, your eggs there. Then we've got, what else have we got in here? Oh my goodness. Oh, this is the silicon rectangle. This can go into the oven. You can do a rice slice or zucchini slice, or you can pop it into the um, fridge and do a cheesecake jelly slice or a rocky road in that one. Or you could do, I used to do this at parties all the time. I would make a um, Malteser self-sourcing pudding in here. That's delicious. Or you can do sushi. You can make pizza in here. This goes into the oven, the freezer, the microwave oven, the gas oven, the electric oven, the wood oven. You've got that big kugel hop for bunt form or the crown form. If that's a little bit too big, you might want to go for the smaller version. All right, so you've got those in there. What have we got in here? Oh, look, nachos in the oven. How gorgeous would that be? Or a massive quiche or a cheesy flan. You could do that for the large one. Waffle, anyone? <laughs> it's a little bit what I can do on some of my videos, I know. So why not just grab, don't just grab one. Make sure you grab two because then you can bake them into the microwave or into the oven. You've got a sweet waffle or a savoury waffle, right? You've got those. And you've, of course, if you're making cookies or baking, you've got your little pastry sheet, cookie sheet, baking sheet. Remember, hot soapy water before each use, that activates the non-stickness to it, all right? And then you've... Oh, look, it got another little bubby one, <laughs> right? Because one is not enough. You need a couple if you're going to make a couple, right? And then, of course, what's this? Oh, this is the other little rectangle form. How cute, cute, cute and cool are these, right? Now, these were in Choice Magazine a few years ago, voted as the best silicon cookware on the market that's still covered under a warranty. What you do is, when you roll this up, you do the ring test, the pinch test, the pull test. See how the colour doesn't bleed out of the ring? That's why you know it's 100% silicon. If you grab a, one from the cheap shop and if you do the ring test, you can sort of see a little white line in there. They've watered that down with latex and other ingredients. Not good. There is no latex in any of the Tupperware silicon. It's like a memory foam pillow. It always goes straight back to its original shape. And you know that no chemicals are going to be leaching into your food because it's 100% Tupperware silicon, all right? And then you can just store that in your Tupperware modular mate rectangle number <laughs> and you know it's a rectangle number four because on the bottom there's a circle that says it's a four and this one will also tell you 
Oh my goodness, that's 8.7 litres. So if you do need to store five kilos of rice, your rectangle number four is going to do it. If you want to keep all of your silicon cookware in here, I keep mine under the sink. Um, that's going to keep everything nice and neat and ordered. Whether you've got packets and things, um, uh, open, half open packets of chips, or I've got two, you know those big two packets of... Um, Mission Tortilla Chips, they fit into here perfectly as well. And because they're stackable, packable and easy to get addable, you'll know exactly what you've got in here and it will give you 33% more space in your pantry, right? I think there's lots of different colours. Um, every now and again when they have the purple on sale, I always grab an extra couple of purple just as a stock up, as, as a little backup for myself in there, all right? So now we've got six seconds on the clock. Countdown. Oh, my goodness. Where's my blower? Oh, quick, quick. Happy birthday, top away. <laughs> All right, it's done. Now, let's just pull this out. We'll pop this, pull that pressure cooker out, and we'll pop our chicken stock in here. Let's make up our chicken stock. We're going to pop that in for the full 30 seconds, or 30 minutes, rather. Now, can you see here? See how the pressure indicator is still in the up position? You must let it go down into the down position by itself because that'll finish off the cooking process, right? So that's our mushroom risotto. We've got that in there. There is our Brussels sprouts with our red onion and our um, balsamic vinegar that I'm gonna have with it. I've got my homemade stock in there. Let's think about dessert. I'm not sure we might do that for Pudding Saturday tomorrow. We've got a lot of options, haven't we? Give me a like, give me a follow, give me a subscribe. I'm gonna put photos up into almost every platform that allows me to put photos up in there. If you've got any questions or suggestions, please let me know, more than happy to help. And in the meantime, Oh, actually, I have forgotten something. <laughs> what I'm going to do is, when this goes down, I'm going to zest up a lemon. And I've got some butter in my Tupperware butter container, my butter dish. I'm going to pop that through there with some lemon and maybe a little bit of cayenne pepper for a bit of kick. I'm going to fold that through and then I'm going to serve that with my Brussels sprouts. How delicious is that? You know what you need to do. Everybody sing along with me. Forget your troubles and get happy, don't you cares away. Shout out and get happy, I will see you all another day. <laughs> Thank you all for watching everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.